What's going on, everybody? My name is Ben, and welcome back to Ben Build. We are on episode number eight of our Armstrong Whitworth Whitley for the Bomber Command Buddy Build. And today, guys, we're really going to push forward and get some paint on the Whitley. Make sure to prime it up. We also have to do some detail work here on the rear turret, the front turret, get these all lined up. So this is going to look really cool once we get finished up. Now, the back turret here, though, I wanted to try something a little different. I have an idea. So let's see what I can do to get this thing looking the way I want. So first of all, the turret itself has these large ammo boxes right here. These are what those are supposed to be. Now, typically, you'd have a belt-fed chain of bullets coming up out of that and attaching into the breech. So up here, kind of around, and then into the breech of the gun. And it would be that way on both sides. In fact, there would actually be two belts per gun because, well, there's actually two guns here. So I want to try to reproduce that in some fashion. I don't know if I can really do much, but I have an idea. Now, you can go out and buy actual photo etched machine gun belts for 172nd scale, but I don't have time or money to do that right now. So I have come up with an idea. Now, my idea actually uses this. This is a basic zip tie. It's a small zip tie, but it's a zip tie nonetheless. Now, the way zip ties work, there's a bunch of ridges, like teeth, that sit up on top of the zip tie. What we're going to do is we're going to cut off the actual zip part right here. Just go ahead and use my flesh cuts. Just pop that edge right off. And then we're going to actually take off the raised edges. So we're just left with that center section with all the raised teeth. Now, my idea is that I can use that to represent bullets. So what I'm going to do is I'm take my straight edge and I want to go ahead and line it up just on the inside of that edge here on the zip tie. In fact, let me go ahead and reposition this right about there. Now, using my X-Acto knife, I'm just going to go ahead and slowly and lightly score this whole area. In fact, let's get a better blade here. And I'm not going to push too hard because if I end up snagging, I'm just going to pull that piece of zip tie right down the ruler. I don't want to do that, so I'm just take bit by bit, slowly take off that edge. Once I'm through, we will have two parts. And we can actually take the other side and trim off that exact same edge. We should be looking pretty good. So I've actually made two of these. I have one already installed, and this is my second one. And what I'm doing here is I'm using my flush cuts, and I'm taking section by section incrementally off so I can get the proper length. I'm also going to bend it, and I'm going to put a little bit of super glue so that this will fit down right on top of that ammo box. And then I can position it where it needs to go. So with my tweezers, let's just test fit right about there. Yeah, that's pretty good. I'm going to use my tweezers now. We're just going to go ahead and bend that around, make sure that we have a nice curve to it. We're not going to be able to see much past the actual breach itself, so I'm not too worried about that. I just want it curved and pointed in the right direction. So we're going to again grab this, and let's check and see how it lines up. There we go. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. So what we're going to do now is we're going to glue that in. That's going to allow us to have pretty much a blank canvas so we can come back and we can work that. And I'm going to paint it all black. And then we're going to go ahead and dry brush over top of that a nice copper color for the bullets themselves. I don't know if it's going to work, but we are going to try it. And while the super glue is curing off camera, we're going to turn our attention over to the bombs and to the wheels. Now there is a seam that runs around the bombs and a seam that runs around the wheels. So I want to go ahead and remove those seams, send everything else out and get these looking sharp because we're going to need these all ready to go so I can paint them up and get them ready for installation. But that'll probably be next episode.
So those bombs and wheels look pretty good. We're going to go ahead and let those off to the side, and we're going to install the bomb racks. Now, the bomb racks themselves, there's actually four, two in the back bomb bay, two in the front bomb bay. And we're just going to clip those right into the locating tabs, making sure that they are pretty parallel with the sides of the bomb bay so that I can get these nice and glued in. Now they're going to be black according to the instructions, so I'm not too concerned about color. We'll airbrush all those anyway, not a big deal. We have three more to go, so let's go ahead and clip off the next one, clean those up, and get them ready for installation. Drop a little bit of glue right here on that locating tab, and drop that right down into the bomb bay. Pretty decent. So let's go ahead and let this cure, and move on to the next area. Also on the bomb bays, it comes with bomb bay doors. Now it gives you the option of having these bomb bay doors closed, or you can have them open. I want to go ahead and have them open. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and slice off each of these different bomb bay doors, position them, and glue them down to the fuselage. I'm actually going to leave off the inner doors, though, until after I get the bombs installed, because it looks like it'd be pretty tight to get those bombs in there with all the doors on. So I'm just going to go ahead and slice off and install the outer doors. I think that should be good enough, at least for right now. We're also going to have to remove a couple of injection marks that are on the inside of a few of these doors. I've got my jeweler files out for that. Shouldn't be any trouble. We're just going to really sand those down, maybe scrape a bit with my hobby knife. Make sure that these are nice and smooth. So we're going to sand them off, clean them all up, and that should be good enough to go ahead and then start installing these onto the sides of the aircraft. Now you may remember that last episode, I used the RF interior green to go ahead and to paint the inside of the flaps. What we're gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and mask all those off in preparation for your base coat. That black base coat that I'm gonna go ahead and spray on, I wanna make sure that I protect the green of the actual flaps. Now I'm gonna use some tape. I'm just gonna slice off the excess. I'm gonna cover the inside and the bottom part of those flap areas. That should be good enough to go ahead and keep these things Nice and green. I'm just going to trim off the edges, make sure it fits down inside, covering a little bit of the side walls of these flaps. So now we have both of them finished up and we are ready for paint. Now I'm going to be using some Tamiya flat black. I think that's the best course of action. And we're going to be doing that over the entire model, both top and bottom. The reason I'm doing that is because it's going to act as both a primer and it's going to act as a good base coat for black basing. Now, before I go ahead and I start on the black basing, we're also going to need to detail up a little bit here on the front turret and the rear turret. So we're going to go ahead and take our flat black and our tiny brush. We're going to paint guns. We're going to paint ammo boxes. We're going to go do a little bit of dry brushing and get these turrets ready for installation. Good. Not too bad. I mean, the rear turret isn't exactly as I envisioned it, but you know what? It's good enough. The old three foot rule, we're fine with that. And it most likely is going to be somewhat obscured by just the glazing, so we're not too worried about it. So now let's go ahead and load up that airbrush and get this entire aircraft painted this flat black by Tamiya. 
Now remember, this actually is not the final coat. This is purely just a basing and priming coat. So let's get it done. All right, everybody, we have the black basing coat all finished up. The model looks great. I really like to me a flat black because it goes on well. It's nice and smooth paint. It's easily mixable and it sprays through my airbrush beautifully. Now, of course, comes the hard part of having to come back and actually do the marbling coat and the top coat. Now, the top coat is going to be a NATO black. This is my idea here, a very highly thinned top coat of NATO black. That's not too black, but it's not too gray either. It's a good intermediate color. But we're going to have to do the marbling coat, and that's going to be made up of everything from medium gray to dark gray, extra dark sea gray, light gray, whatever we have, as well as white for a little bit of fading. So we have a lot to do, guys, just a whole lot of experimentation and learning here because I really want to make sure this looks cool. So that is the challenge. We also have to paint the inside of the wheel wells and the instructions call out for a silver color. We have chrome, we have aluminum, so both of those should work just fine. Now, for the other side though, for the top side of this aircraft, we're not gonna be using the grays to go ahead and do the marbling coat. We're gonna be using some browns and some greens. This is a tan color, which I'm hoping to be able to use either for a blend coat or something like that. And then we have, of course, dark green for the other part of the top camouflage. But thank you guys so much for watching. We will see you back here next week on another episode of Ben Builds, the Armstrong Whitley Mark V. Until then, everybody, keep on building. Good luck with your builds, and we will see you back here next week on Ben Builds. Thanks so much, everybody. We'll see you soon.